Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ramadan Mubarak. Ramadan is nearly over and we are beyond halfway. So, assalam to all of you, Bangla Ikra, Ikra Bangla channel uh, viewers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our Ramadan and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us in this regard. Uh, for today's session, we have a uh, few very important things to speak about, both the financial and the social aspects uh, of Ramadan. And SubhanAllah, Ramadan is a very comprehensive time. There's a lot that we can get during this time. It's a very productive time. Ramadan, we can make it as productive as possible. So there's several things that I want to speak about. Number one, Ramadan is a time where we do have to focus on ourselves. There's no doubt about that because our worship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our fasting is very personal, right? It's not for somebody else. Right? So for example, if it was for somebody else, we could just tell people we're fasting and not actually be fasting. But if we actually are staying hungry, and that must, means it must be for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, we feel much more closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during that time. And the other thing that happens is that we get a lot more people visiting one another, uh, or rather coming together in the masjid. So masjids are generally much more fuller during this month of Ramadan. And that breaks the backbone of shaitan, right? And that allows Muslims to interact with one another and benefit from one another. That's why there are, I mean, in many masjids, they have programs throughout the month of Ramadan. They have programs after Fajr. They have programs after Dhuhr, Tajweed classes, for example. They have programs after Asr. Uh, in the last several years, that's what's been happening. There's programs before and after Taraweeh, during Taraweeh. MashaAllah, there's the Quran is being recited. Everybody's coming together. And what a wonderful feeling that that creates. And one of the benefits in doing something collectively together is that you feel better about doing it. Everybody else is doing it. You feel like doing it as well. Everybody else is feeling religious and uh, practicing during the month, you feel like doing the same thing. You feel left out otherwise. And that's a wonderful, uh, that's one thing that we need to really, really take advantage of. So I would say that in Ramadan, if we don't want to be deprived of acceptance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is one of the most opportune times in Ramadan that we try to make up with people if we have problems with them. You know, having a problem with somebody, it's easy to occur. As human beings, we have our own ways of doing things and thinking about things. And it's possible that, you know, we had a bit of a conflict with somebody. That's possible. But no conflict should be allowed to continue beyond three days maximum. And if it's with your own family members, it should not be allowed to continue at all. Sort it out. Deal with it rather than keeping a uh, bad thought in the mind and harboring ill uh, feelings inside the heart. Try to sort it out. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves it when people uh, come back together again. For example, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-Badi'u bis-salami bari'um min al-kibr. The one, the first person to sala give salam. You know, if two people have had an issue and who's going to who's going to greet the other person first? Have a, you know, a pleasant face and greet the other person first? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever does that, they are the one free of they're, they're free of arrogance. They're free of pride. And there's another sunnah, which is that when you meet your brother, or when a sister meets a sister, you do it with a smiling face. That's a sadaqah. And there's a psychological benefit to that. If, there, if shaitan has put into my mind something bad about our brother, and the next time I see him, he just gives me a wonderful smile when he meets me, then I'm gonna, it's going to counter what shaitan puts in my mind. It's going to make me feel like, he can't have a problem with me. Look, he's giving me a smile. Smile is amazing. Smiles are magical. Right? Smiles are magical. And the Prophet ﷺ said that, أَن تَلْقَى أَخَاكَ بِوَجْهٍ طَلْقٍ أو طَلِيقٍ That you should, uh, it's a sadaqah that you, uh, when you meet your brother, you meet them so with a smiling face. It, it's an amazing, it's an amazing blessing and barakah in that. So try to resolve our problems. And we should resolve them sooner than later. So be forgiving. The Prophet ﷺ doesn't want us to dispute during the month of Ramadan. So it's saying, uh, the Prophet ﷺ said that, for example, if somebody confronts you, an ignorant person, an ignorant person is somebody who doesn't understand the value of Ramadan, so they want to argue with you in the month of Ramadan, or they want to irritate you, they want to engage you in something negative, something wrong. You say, Assalamu Alaikum, right? I'm fasting. Assalamu Alaikum. I don't want to dispute with you, I don't want to have a conflict with you. Okay? That's what you do. So 
it's saying that don't engage yourself in futile activities during this month of Ramadan. It should be all positive. Now look, some people, uh, you know, uh, people are going to do lots of worship, mashallah, in Ramadan. But then eventually you might need to do something else just to either relax or have a change of scene. So, I mean, you could sleep. I guess that would be, be better than waste your, wasting your time doing something that is haram or wrong or whatever. But sleeping is not the best use of your time, right? Because when you're sleeping, while you're safe, you're unproductive. So find activities. If you are going to have free time, for example, in the weekend, and you've got enough time that you're using for worship as much as you can manage, then go and do some relief work. Go and volunteer at a masjid. Go and volunteer at a soup kitchen. Go and volunteer in a homeless shelter. Go and volunteer in distributing dates. Go and volunteer in maybe uh, give, uh, uh, distributing food to the poor in your area to find maybe somebody else who needs some shopping done in the month of Ramadan. There could be so many different things that you can do. And husband and wife teams, you know, you can do this as a bonding team. You can do it with the children. Go and do some good activities so that every moment of our Ramadan is used for some kind of benefit and virtue. The primary focus of Ramadan is to accumulate as many good deeds as possible by showing him our devotion. So that means reading Quran, right? Doing dhikr of Allah, lots of dua, uh, many tasbihs of adhkar, salawat on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Learning the Quran, memorizing the Quran, understanding the Quran, listening to taraweeh, all of these things. But if you want to do something beyond that, then rather than waste time just browsing on YouTube or browsing on Facebook or whatever the case is, right? If you do, then make, I know a lot of people, mashallah, they just put off the TV during the month of Ramadan, right? They just completely put it off. They don't watch Netflix. They don't do any of that stuff. That should be completely away from us. It should all be focused in education. So what we can do, I would, uh, a good suggestion is that, mashallah, families are very close during the month of Ramadan. The children are really into it. It's much easier to manage the children during Ramadan because they feel righteous as well and pious. So I think one of the things that we can do is that at suhoor time, for example, uh, or at iftar time, uh, just before iftar, you can sit down and have a bit of a reading from a good book like uh, I don't know, Riyadh Salihin or Fadail A'mal or any other book that you've got access to and everybody can benefit from that. Or you have iftar and then after you have the iftar, everybody prays there, you know, everybody's prayed their maghrib and then they've done iftar, they can actually then sit down and as a family, they can maybe read Quran to one another. Uh, mashallah, if, you, if your Quran reading is not up to scratch and, you know, you make mistakes in your reading, then Ramadan is a time that, mashallah, many masajid are providing assistance in this regard by having teachers there available after different prayers, right? Uh, so that you can go and correct your reading. That would be an amazing thing that you can do because Ramadan is the month of the Quran anyway, so you can do that. So the few things that I mentioned was that try to remove any conflicts and disputes that we have. Don't get into any new conflicts and disputes. Try to be... Uh, as much reconciling as possible, try to clear our debts uh, in terms of especially our debts of aggression against somebody else or if we've uh, done anything wrong against somebody else, try to clear all of that out of the way. And the last thing I want to speak about today <clears throat> is the financial aspects. So mashallah, you will see that there is so much sadaqah. If there is a time when sadaqah is given, and so much sadaqah, so much charity is given during the month of Ramadan. I think if there's any month in the whole year when there is so much money that is being given, you know, for the sake of good causes to the poor and other causes, it's in the month of Ramadan. And the reason for this is that because of Allah's generosity that Allah is giving so much, He's opening the doors of paradise and He's abundantly showering with reward and mercy and forgiveness and uh, writing people to be in paradise. So likewise, Right? People feel generous. So people give a lot of charity. Every day there's collections going on in the masjids. There is so much. So do your little part in that as well. Clearly, if you have zakat and you've not given it, then make sure you calculate your zakat. 
um, uh, if you have questions about zakat, you know, feel free to, uh, you know, contact your scholars. On zamzamacademy.com, we have a short, short clips on zakat, right, of how to do zakat on, uh, for different types of wealth and the different uh, aspects of that. Please feel free to check that out as well. But get your zakat done and uh, don't delay the zakat because this is a time when we have to remember the poor as well. And you must have heard that one of the side benefits of fasting, aside from the worship aspect, is that we sympathize with the poor who don't get. We are voluntarily staying hungry. They have to stay hungry. All right? And it's difficult. And the pangs of hunger. And, and, and that makes it very it's debilitating. So this is the time when we remember our poor as well. So that's why in Ramadan there's numerous types of giving that people do. There's obviously... The zakat, which is not dedicated to Ramadan, it can be any time, but a lot of people have actually kept it, uh, they, they, they do it in Ramadan for whatever reason, uh, because of the extra rewards, I guess. Then there's general charity. So don't just restrict yourself to zakat, give extra. So if you're going to give this much zakat, then also have a projection in mind that I'm going to give this much sadaqah as well. And spread your charity. You know, spread your charity to the poor, to the masjid, to madrasas, to uh, Islamic uh, uh, organizations uh, and relief organizations and so on. Then after that we also have Sadaqatul Fitr. The purpose of Sadaqatul as we're getting closer to the end of Ramadan, get your Sadaqatul Fitr paid. Now technically it should actually be paid on the day of Eid uh, for the poor people so that they can also enjoy their Eid. They can also have something to eat and drink on the day of Eid. That's the real purpose but because we live in England and we don't really see poor people every day. I mean I've spent Eid in poorer countries. For example, the last time I was in Zambia, I, we were going for Eid and I was so, shocked because I don't see this in England. There are so many people lining the streets. They know today that people are going to give them Sadaqatul Fitr. Right? So that's why in England we give earlier so that the relief organizations can get it to the poor people in time for Eid. That's why we give it earlier. Otherwise, you're actually supposed to give it on the day. But if you give a relief organization on the day, or you give in your masjid, you give Sadaqatul Fitr on the day of Eid, how are they going to get it to the poor people, right? On that day, they generally get it to the poor people afterwards. But the best thing is to get it to poor people for the Eid prayer. So that, that's another thing. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says those people who cannot fast, that meaning those people who cannot fast until they die because they've got some physical debility or something like that, they give a fidya, right? And generally the fidya is the amount, a similar amount to Sadaqatul Fitr for every fast that you miss. Again, that's for the poor as well. So once Ramadan begins, if you can't give, uh, then you know by the end of Ramadan, if you can't fast, then by the end of Ramadan, then you give fidya for the month as well. That goes to the poor. There's a big element of uh, of uh, focus on the poor during this month, because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala wants from us that we become caring, compassionate individuals. That there's a balance in our communities. That the wealthy they give, so that the, the those who have less, those who have nothing, they also have something. And that's the balance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to create because Ramadan is a month of empathy as well. Ramadan is a month of goodness. So the few things that we spoke, spoke about today, number one, the health benefits, uh, the social benefits rather, that we try to correct our issues with one another. We try to improve ourselves uh, both physically, in our kindness, in our behavior, uh, in uh, our thoughts about others, in the assistance of other people, in helping other people, giving them a share and mashallah Allah will give us abundantly back. If Allah is promising 70 times the reward for every fard deed that we do, can you imagine what you're going to get back for every bit of charity that you give in Ramadan? Can you imagine? If 70 is being given, subhanallah that's abundant, Allah will give you back and you know from experience I will say that the best side business that you can have a lot of people say that they got a job, but they need some extra money. What's a good side business? Oh, let me go and do a bit of Uber, right? Let me drive a taxi or something like that. I'll give you the best side business is give sadaqah. Even if you're a poor person, if you give a bit of sadaqah every week, every month, you will see the rewards come back. And the best way to do this, I'm going to encourage you, is find a, a few charities, Islamic schools, madrasas, institutes, right? And... Do a direct debit. Set up a direct debit during this month of Ramadan. Set up a direct debit. Five, ten pound here, five, ten pound here, maybe thirty pound, depending on what your income is. You can give fifty pounds here, fifty pounds there. 
The benefit of that is that you won't have to think about this each month because we forget. And then shaitan comes to us. In Ramadan, if you set up the direct debit, my assumption is inshallah that because you've set it up in Ramadan, then inshallah Allah will hopefully give us the maximized reward for every other month that that money is going to go out. Right? That's my hope from Allah. And you know, we can have hopes in Allah because Allah is the most generous and Allah treats us the way we think about Him. So yeah, Allah, accept it from us. Accept it from us. So set up direct debits for the various different places you want to give to that you can relate to and you want to benefit, uh, give, give your money to them for benefit and set that up. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. Eid is going to be around the corner. Then there's going to be the six days of fasting of Shawwal that's going to come around. One of the benefits that I see during uh, these fasts or for these fasts is that Ramadan finishes. That environment of Ramadan kind of ends, right? People go back to doing certain things. Shaitan comes back out. But what the Prophet is saying, fast for six, six days. You still feel like you're in Ramadan. So that when shaitan does come out, you can actually still resist him. And a lot of people have said that if you are able to protect yourself for a week or two after Ramadan, inshallah, you'll be protected for the rest of the month. Because what happens is that when shaitan comes out of his being locked up on the day of Eid, he tries to make us spoil everything we've accumulated during the month of Ramadan. There's a lot of people who have said that, Alhamdulillah, in the month of Ramadan, I avoided this haram habit that I had for all of these days. And it was so weird that on the day of judgment, I committed it again. And they make, it demoralizes you. It makes you feel so bad. That's why I said, be very careful on the day of Eid. The day of Eid is for eating and drinking and so on, right? Halal, but it is not to go back to your sins and not to let shaitan come back upon you. That's why I believe that if you resist shaitan on that day and then you start fasting for the six days, the Prophet ﷺ has promised the reward of as if you'll fast the whole year. That's the reward you're going to get. That's because Ramadan is 30 days. If you multiply that by 10 rewards, you get 300 days of reward. And then you add another six days, so you get another 60 days of reward, so that's 360 days. It's like you fasted for the whole year, they're going to get that reward. But the other benefit I see is that you still feel like Ramadan is still there. You're still doing iftar, you're still doing suhoor, right? So you can actually continue to do the good deeds. So uh, be very careful after Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa wa ta'ala allow us to get the greatest benefit from these last days and make them even better than the previous days. Allow us to do even more. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to continue the good things, many of the good things that we do even after the month of Ramadan and do not let us become distant again. Allow us to continue the good habits and the good worships that we've done. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all and please keep us in your du'as. And until we meet you again, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.